Hey guys, it's me, Jake, from JakeMan21642. Today I thought I would just do a quick update on my new daily driver. Um, I know I've only made one video of this car on my channel so far, but finals week is finally over. I've got some free time, and I just flipped 50,000 miles yesterday, so thought I would do just a little walk around tour and uh, talk about a couple of things with this car. I also did film a little test drive clip that I'll throw in this video as well. But yeah, so far I've had this car for close to two months and I've done close to 3,000 miles with it, and so far it has been absolutely flawless. I mean, I may be a little easy to please compared to uh, everything, comparing this car to everything else I've owned, but so far no complaints. Earlier this week, actually, we got a decent amount of snow here. It's actually probably one of the coldest days so far here today. It's 30 degrees outside and just awful, but I decided to go make myself sick and take this to the self-serve car wash, get it nice and cleaned up and do a quick video. But we did get some snow this week and actually when the snow uh, started falling down and actually sticking to the roads, I was about 30 miles outside of the city visiting some family, stayed for way too long and had to drive this thing home in it. And I have to say after that, I completely understand the appeal of an all-wheel drive car now. Even on just these crappy Goodyear Eagle Sport um, all-season tires, this car was flawless in the snow. This was easily probably the smoothest and safest and most controlled feeling car I've ever driven. But otherwise, outside, um, everything is pretty much the way it has been. I've definitely gotten a lot more comfortable with this car and I've really just been enjoying it a lot. This car has made me realize how much I put up with on my old daily driver, my Accord, which, don't get me wrong, was a great car, but at the end of the day, it was a 15-year-old Honda, so this is a huge step up. But coming from my first video of this car, I'll definitely try to be a little more insightful this time. I know on that video, um, you might as well just name it Jake Buys a Car that was manufactured within the last decade. I also apologize for the shakiness of this video. I'm trying my best, but it really is freezing out today. But I also have to say about the last video too, I am well aware that uh, if you played a drinking game every time I said nice in that video, you would probably end up in the hospital. But outside, I mean, everything is the way it has been. Um, like I said, Goodyear Eagle Sports, wearing decently. I really don't plan on keeping these past the winter. They're good tires, but they're good years. I don't expect them to last long. Brakes, I really do want to do uh, some pads and rotors on this soon. Um, I know the rotors are definitely original, and like I said in the first video, the rear pads were replaced um, like 200 miles before I bought it. Otherwise, outside, everything is really the same. Up front, we have the uh, HID headlights. These are the Bi-Xenons with the uh, active bending feature, which is probably one of my favorite things about this car. Also do have the high pressure headlamp washers, which was fantastic in the snow. That was such a gr uh, great feature to have. Really does make a difference. Another thing I have figured out about this car since the first video is it does have automatic windshield wipers. And it's one of those things on a lot of cars well, where they'll say they have it, but that doesn't necessarily mean they work. The ones on this car actually work very well. I also can't remember if I had these last time or not, but I did get some new wiper blades. Just got the uh, Goodyear ones they sell at Costco for now. I've had a set on the 240 for a while, and they've been great, so I picked up a set for this. Otherwise, though, outside, it's probably my favorite angle of the car right here. You can see, too, unlike everything else I've owned, I haven't ruined this one with stickers yet. Just got the one nice and basic one right in the middle. Got to represent. I just left nice tire shine smudges on it. Also, one thing I really want to do soon, probably the next thing I'll do to this car, is get some uh, LED plate bulbs. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. Also, while we are at the trunk of this vehicle, I will say, yesterday I did trigger the valet mode on this car by accident. I was uh, out at a store that was not really in the greatest area, so I took my cash out of my wallet that I needed and locked my wallet in the glove box before I went in. Came back out and had a mini panic attack for a good five minutes because no matter what I did from the trunk or from inside of the car, the trunk just would not open. And I turned into my dad cussing these newfangled cars with these annoying electronic releases that you just press. And then I get back in and I go to pull my wallet out of the glove box, unlock it, and I notice on the gauges that it says uh, valet mode disengage. So figure out how valet mode works. But we'll get in and start it up. I mean, really not much has changed. 
The biggest difference inside of this car is I did finally pick up a set of WeatherTech floor mats. You can see I just hosed all of the snow crap off of them at the car wash. Didn't get a set for the rear. I probably will um, eventually pick a set up or see if I can find them. I just, at the time I bought these, I was not in the mood to spend uh, basically my car payment amount on a set of floor mats. But I did get front ones. Anyone out there with an S62, if you're buying these on Amazon, buy the ones for the XC60. For some reason, they're about $20 cheaper and they're the exact same floor mats. That is coming from someone that works at a Volvo dealership. They are the exact same floor mats. I don't know why the XC60 ones are $20 cheaper, but... Uh, Save yourself that. That's what these are, and you can see they fit perfectly fine. Start it on the brake and press. I mean, basically inside though, like I said, nothing has changed. Um, still have my window tint. Probably my favorite thing I've done to this car. I can't live without it. I have to say too that um, when I first got the tint, I kind of wished I had gone a little bit darker. This is 35% all the way around. Kind of wish I had done 20. Now at this point, I really do appreciate it because I swear once it cured, it got a lot darker. I do the same thing as my Accord where I just usually keep this closed and that also helps with keeping light out. But this is enough tint to stay out of trouble around here because um, technically I think 50% is the legal limit on the front windows in Virginia. Ooh, you know, come get me. But this is enough to stay out of trouble. It looks good and uh, it's nice because at night in parallel parking situations and things like that, I can actually still see outside of this car. I've driven plenty of friends' cars that have 20%, and with my eyesight, that's just no good. But otherwise, inside, I mean, everything is holding up really good. Typical Volvo, um, three-spoke steering wheel. I definitely do appreciate this wheel. I usually am not a fan of three-spoke, but this is very comfortable, very nice to hold on to. It's a thick wheel, which I've never had in a car before. As I said in my first video, I've always owned old stuff that had really thin wheels. Um, I've definitely gotten used to the visibility. I mean, I still, I get in my 240 after driving this, and like I said before, it's like being in a fishbowl, but I've definitely gotten used to the visibility. I really am still getting used to how high the deck lid is. I had the same issue with my dad's Mark V Jet. It's just these new cars are so high up. When you're parallel parking, you feel like you're so close to what's behind you, and then you open the door and it's still a mile away. But inside, um, as I said, flipped 50,000 miles right there um so i've got about 50k or two years of warranty left on it still but it's been flawless and i really have high hopes for this car i'm nothing would make me happier if i didn't have to touch that warranty once but it is euro so we'll see how that goes go through here you can see my average mpg i'd say that's about a 70 30 mix of uh city and or of highway and city and still like i said me not being very easy on the car but I mean, you can't expect that much more from a 300 horsepower, six cylinder, all wheel drive, 3,800 pound car. And honestly, I don't even care. It's worth it. It does need premium, but I, all of my other cars are gas savers. I've still got the 240 for when I wanted four cylinder around town. So not a big deal to me. Everything inside though, I know I keep saying it, but holding up exactly the way it is. I put some chemical guys, um, leather conditioner on the seats definitely a little bit more higher quality than what we use at work. I also did go through the stereo. This is probably one of my favorite things about the cars because it made a huge difference. I went through and played with the equalizer a little bit. I still probably need to fine tune it, but uh, this made a huge difference in the way the stereo sounds. Not only is it a lot louder, it just sounds so much cleaner. Um, I love the stereo on this car for it being just the standard audio system, not even the, I believe at the time this one was made, it was the performance audio system, but these you also can get with a Harman Kardon system, which is absolutely amazing. But this is still a pretty impressive stereo, especially coming from every car I've owned before. I've slapped some kind of like horrible aftermarket system in. JBL is what I had in the Accord. And while you can make stereos in old cars sound good, with my luck, every time I touched the stereo in a car, it was never the same again, and things always rattled. So it's nice to have a good factory system, which is something I've never had before. Otherwise, though, dual zone automatic climate control. The heat in this car is great, just like my 240. Um, it seems like Volvo can really get heat right in their cars. Heated seats for the driver and passenger, of course. Six-speed automatic, which I'm still uh, very appreciative of. I haven't owned an auto, well, I have my 240, but I haven't had an automatic daily driver in forever, and I've never actually owned a powerful car with an automatic transmission, so 
This is very, very nice. This is a good transmission too. And when you put it into sport mode, it is surprisingly responsive for just a six speed slush box by Eisen. Um, otherwise inside though, cup holders, um, still no sunglasses container. I actually completely forgot, I think someone actually mentioned it on my last video, you can get, it's like the uh, Mark IV Beetles, you can get a sunglasses container that goes over here and will fold down, so I may try to get one of those online, I think they were only like 50 bucks on eBay and it's just two Torx bits to install it. We'll step out, I'll show you everything else, like I said, I know I keep saying it, nothing has really changed with the car. That's kind of the beauty I've been appreciating of having something new with a warranty is that things don't have to change with the car because they actually work from the get-go. Um, in the back seat, everything's the same. I really haven't even had a lot of people in this car just because I've been so busy going back and forth between school and work that it's just me in the car most of the time. Back seat headrests are folded down. That really helps with the visibility. Just got a bag of detailing stuff and a magazine in there. Trunk is exactly the same as last time. I haven't even loaded this car up with all of my junk yet, but do have some grocery bags and then the two original floor mats. This was wonderful. Within a couple days of buying the car, I stepped in some gum in my school parking lot and tracked it all over this mat. So that was the final push to get the weather techs. Like I said, though, Everything's been perfect with the car. I love it. It's everything I wanted. Um, also have my phone charger right here. Go into the USB inside of the glove box. Um, I really, if you would have asked me a year ago if I'd owned something this nice, I would have laughed in your face. But I really do appreciate this car. I appreciate every day with it. And this is definitely something I can see myself keeping for a while. I really, really love the products that Volvo makes, and I've always loved this exact car the entire time I've been at Volvo, so the fact that I still own one does feel a bit surreal. You can see up front the bi-xenon headlights and then the uh, LEDs, and under the hood, the T6 3-liter. Once again, nothing has changed under here. It was funny, I was hanging out with one of my friends who's a bit of a Ford guy, and we were laughing at, uh, this is... Because obviously, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, this engine was developed while uh, Ford still owned Volvo. This engine was originally developed at a Ford plant in Wales. I believe it was even used in the Mondeo and like some Euro cars. But it's funny because under here, you can see this, or if you're familiar with Fords, this is definitely a Ford coolant reservoir. We actually think this is exactly the same as my friend's Taurus. Cap is definitely the same. This, if you pop it off, the cap says FOMOCO on it. And you can see right there in the intercool piping. So uh, if this car breaks, I know who to blame. <laughs> but really, this is a great engine. There are some interesting complex designs under here, which makes me glad I've got the warranty. Like if you take a look at the alternator, your serpentine belt is right there. And then your alternator is right there, which is, this is something I've never even noticed or paid attention to on these. That is a coupling sleeve going to the alternator. So definitely some interesting designs, but um, honestly, I know I said it in the first video, but I've seen these with triple the miles that this one has still going strong. So I'm not very worried about it. But I'll definitely do videos with the car. I'll get some more test drive videos, things like that. Let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll bring it to the channel, especially now that I've got some more free time for the next couple of weeks. So just let me know. I know I keep saying it, I love this car. I love every day with it, and I can't wait to actually get this on the road and do some road trips with it too, because this thing is a dream on the highway, and the passing power is just amazing. But as always, guys, any questions, comments, anything like that, drop them down below. I'm sorry for kind of a quick and rush video, but let me know what you want to see with the car, and thanks for watching.